You're listening to Forward Faster, bite-sized insights for entrepreneurs. Hello, we're here today to talk to Milton Chang about his journey through entrepreneurship. So the first question I have for you is getting started. What was your path to getting started? How did you end up where you are? I was doing graduate work in laser research and uh, was very happy to find a job working for an aerospace company in their research lab. But after two years, I was increasingly weary about my future in terms of where does the job lead me. And so uh, it was very fortunate that John Matthews, a uh, stu student, fellow students at Caltech, that's a year ahead of me, uh, to ask me to join a startup company, Newport Corporation, and I just jumped at it. And uh, I knew nothing about business, but the fact that um, he's more interested in engineering than business, I became the vice president of marketing and sales at a time when I knew nothing about business, marketing, or sales. So that's how I got started. There are two important lessons I had to share with young people. One is that trust your heart. Do what you feel like it's right for you rather than persist, just stay on the job even though if you don't like it. The second one is always be responsible and be productive because John could have called somebody else. I didn't know him really well. And so, but he saw that I was a hardworking guy and he liked it uh, for me to join his company and that gave me the opportunity. I was with the company for about 12 years or 15 years and after that, I took a two year sabbatical and did a, a few venture startup and both of them went public. And then I um, started a new focus, which is in a different business, but slightly different focus products. And um, from there, I uh, also, new focus also went IPO. And I incubated probably 10 companies and none of them failed actually, not bragging, but um, I, I have a conservative way of looking at things, which is not always applicable, but at least uh, it worked for me. I came to the Bay Area and started uh, investing in two startup companies, and both of those companies actually went public fairly quickly. And um, after that, I started a new focus. I wanted to do it in uh, the Bay Area so that I'm a little bit away from the old company to cause uh, competitive issues. A new Focus also was able to go public, especially had a very high valuation when the telecom bubble hits. And, um, and then from there on, I pretend to be VC and that did not work out very well. Uh, I was uh, maybe 30% successful, the companies. Uh, but uh, as a, then I revert back to angel investing. My total uh, experience with angel investing is very successful. Um, around 10, or, uh, more than a dozen companies and all of them were successful. So that was uh, something I like to do now. Today I'm semi-retired and still with, with five companies, startup companies. Actually, I have to say again, all are successful. Two of them are ready to ship products. So anyway, that's my entrepreneurial experience. Can you tell me a little bit about the characteristics that make a good entrepreneur and the definition of a good mentor-mentee relationship? People think of a mentor-mentee relationship as a one-way street in the sense of learning from the mentor. And I think it's not quite. I think, the, um, I think it's very interesting and motivating or give the mentor a reason to take on someone is that when there's a learning and sharing at the same time. So I think the way you interact with the mentor is very important. Uh, rather than sort of like, oh, I don't know how to address this issue, let me go talk to the mentor, is to really do enough homework, to do enough research, and if possible, come up with your own solution. And then run it by the mentor and be very vulnerable in a sense to be very open, uh, never mind making mistakes or asking dumb questions, but you, you establish a trusting relationship with the mentor, that's how it works. 
and that's how you build long-term relationship. I did that with a professional, I guess, old manager, uh, built a successful business, and we actually um, went to uh, lunch once a month, and uh, and we we talk very openly. I literally spill my guts. I wasn't afraid that he would torpedo me. As a CEO, I tell him all my difficulties and my solutions and so forth. And the relationship, I learned a lot. And um, because over time, he also gets to know my business. And so that's how it works. It's a two-way street. So are there certain personality traits that you really admire or like in an entrepreneur and some that are like, oh, that's a real turnoff. I don't want to be around that. Yeah, I think the, um, you know, in a way, there's so many different ways to spoil the soup. But I think the most important negative trait to avoid is um, arrogance, because that's when you stop listening to good ideas uh, and make mistakes. And for a business to be successful, it's really making a series of, uh, co continuously making series of uh, good decisions. And so uh, arrogance is one of the worst enemies for a, an entrepreneur. The number one, as I look at the technical competency of the guy and the technical accomplishments, because if he cannot do, or he or she cannot be successful as a, a technical person, then uh, he doesn't have any competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. What's also important is to take broad interest, as I said early on, about business and management and learning new things. Because at the end, you cannot learn everything from the books. It's you got to think about it, which is, means your intellectual ability which and creativity. And a lot of it is dependent on the information you have. So it's a breadth of knowledge and intellectual ability that makes uh, an entrepreneur successful. How important is that formal education in business versus what you learn feet on the ground? Yeah, I did not have any uh, formal business education when I was building Newport until uh, I was about a year before I was ready to leave. When I was running the company, I was fortunate enough to join the local group of YPO, a Young Presidents Organization, which is um, about 50 um, successful business uh, presidents of local companies. Uh, by the way, that's an international society, very powerful and uh, powerful network. And, um, and we learn from each other. And there's a forum which comprises of 10 people uh, we sworn to secrecy, and we open ourselves, discuss everything, family, business uh, is issues we face, and what, what a great learning opportunity that benefited me a lot. And then I took a, a executive MBA class at Harvard, which is called the OPM, Owner and President's Management Program. And there you interact with about 120 CEOs and owners of business from all around the world. And it was very interesting, it was pointed out that there's a similar uh, course called Advanced Management Program, which uh, v vice presidents of big corporations to, to, uh, that takes the class. And the funny thing is that in OPM, everybody speaks. So you learn from each other. In the Advanced Management Program, everybody clamp up because in big corporations, you get into trouble by speaking out. So it was a great learning experience, and that's um, three weeks uh, for three years with the same group at the same time. So that was extremely beneficial. There's a bit of a myth to say uh, failure is good for you. I, I think failure is okay, but it's not necessarily good for you. <laughs> Try not to fail is probably even better, but um, I, I wouldn't hold it against anybody, but I don't think you need the failure to get a lesson either. Mm -hmm.